So I hate to say this, but looking out um, in the crowd, there are very few of you that I actually know. And um, that means I'm an old timer. <laughs> that is really sad, huh, Elaine and yep. Sandy yep. and Dana? Like, and Brenda. Like, we've been in this work for so long now that I feel like I should always know the people in the room. But uh, the reality of COVID is we have missed a whole bunch of people coming into our community over this past two years and have not had the ability to make connections. And that really is what CAPS is all about, is collaborating with other um, organizations and businesses in our community. Um, our mission is to improve children's lives and to strengthen families through education, advocacy, and support. Uh, we started in 1978 as a grassroots organization right here in Salina and was completely volunteer-led for the first 11 years of our history. And it was in response to child abuse that was taking place in our community. And Wanda Macy and Ruby Reese, who were our founders, said, this is not okay. We are not gonna have children dying in our community because people don't know how to protect kids and don't know how to um, recognize the stress that parenting brings on us. So how many of you are parents? Okay, it is the most rewarding work that you will ever do in your life. It is also the most challenging work we ever get to do in our life. And we are the most underprepared to do that work, <coughs> right? They don't come with instruction books. They're all different. Um, no two kids are the same. And so um, those two ladies wanted to share that message and say it is not okay that when you're feeling stressed that you don't feel supported in this community of Salina because we are caring people and we love each other and we want to provide that care and that support. And that is the root of who we are at CAPS and, and what we um, strive to do. So since 1978, We've gone from, um, in 1989 is when we actually became a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We became a funded United Way partner um, in the mid 90s and have received agency funding over those years. I came to work at CAPS the very first time in 1998 and that's when I learned about the United Way. Um, the United Way at that time was the checkbook of Salina giving. The whole purpose of that campaign and in 1998 they were raising a million dollars, okay? So just to put that in perspective, our economy's changed a little bit over, over this time, right? So in 1998, this community raised a million dollars for their local nonprofit organizations. In that time, the number of nonprofit organizations in this community have at least tripled. So the need has grown and our fundraising hasn't changed. So I'm challenging all of you as um, internal coordinators to think about that as you're telling the story about what the needs in this community are. Um, our financial needs have increased because we are meeting the needs even greater. There have been a lot of um, community organizations or community needs that have increased because of population, but mostly because of our economy. It has greatly changed over the last two decades. Started in 2008, really, when the economy crashed. We are recovering. But we're still not back to where we were in 2008 when we entered the housing crisis. And we see that firsthand at CAPS with the clients that we serve in our parenting education classes, in our family mentoring programs, um, and in our child care partnerships. So Elaine's gonna talk a little bit about child care in our community. Um, but I gotta tell you, some of our greatest advocates and some of our greatest leaders at CAPS has come from people like you sitting in this chair right now. Um, Doug Edwards is a member on our finance committee and he learned about CAPS the first time as a cabinet member. And his job as a cabinet member at that time was to travel around to all the nonprofit organizations that were getting funded by the United Way and to look at their fiscal practices and to learn about the work that they're doing and then to say, yes, we're putting the, we're putting the United Way stamp of approval on this organization, which validates the work in the community. So you guys know when you're saying to your employees, make a donation to these nonprofit organizations they are the model organizations in our community. They meet best practice. They're doing what they need to be doing fiscally. They're running their organizations like businesses. And Doug still sits on our finance committee because he was one of you coming in, doing work with the United Way and looking at, at what's taking place. He learned about our work. He fell in love with our work, obviously, to be doing this work with us still um, into his third decade. He has made that commitment. and so. When Claire reached out to me when she was starting her leadership, um, she was asking me about the history and kind of all of those things. And um, I guess this makes me older than I really think I am or want to be um, because I have that perspective. The Community Foundation is our endowment. 
right? It's our sustainability. That's where we put our money so that we can make sure that that money will always be there. But there's gonna be startup needs, there's gonna be ongoing operational needs, and that's where the United Way comes in. So those gifts that you and your employees are giving to the United Way really impact families that live here in our community. Um, CAPS serves 10,000 unique individuals each year. When the United Way funds went away, that meant <clears throat> we lost $90,000 a year, and that was not money for CAPS. That was a community collaborative grant that was funding child care providers in our community. So I'm, a, I'm imagining a lot of you are in HR. Is that right? How many of you are working with employees that can't find child care today? Raise your hands. It's a big issue. It is a bigger issue today than it was when CAPS got involved with that work with Elaine back in 2000. At that time, we were trying to um, reduce the turnover that was taking place in the child care industry. And we were doing that by providing grants to those partners in order to sustain their workforce. There is no workforce now. We're all competing for the same employees, aren't we? There's this big shuffle of talent that's going on across the community. It's who can pay the most. So early education is the best way to set up our future across the country, across the world, early education. There's research that shows a child who is born into a stable home and has three months of solid, stable support in the first three months of their life. So when they cry, their parents respond. When they cry, their diaper is changed, the food is there. In that first three months, if their needs are met, if they have trauma or adversity that takes place in the next 12 years, they are more likely to be successful than a baby who has no stability in the first three months and then stability for the next 12 years. So we need to be thinking about how are we supporting our young families? How are we supporting that workforce? What benefits are we giving as, um, as employers to these young families and how are we supporting them? So I just plant that seed because that $90,000 that used to go directly back into our childcare partners to sustain their workforce went away three years ago. <clears throat> okay, so Elaine's gonna talk about a lot of those similar things. It wasn't money that was directly funding CAPS because we were the fiscal agent for our community in that work. We now receive a $10,000 grant for the CASA program and we're working with the kids that are most needy um, in our foster care system having volunteers lift their voices back to the court to find them a place where they permanently belong, back into a home. That it's not a place where um, they don't have an uncertainty, okay? It, it may be with, back with their parents. Maybe their parents didn't get the support they needed when they were younger, okay? So we can all be a part of the whole system and fix a lot of the issues if we invest in that um, early need, and the United Way is a great way to do that. So, if you ever have questions about that, I'm happy to come speak directly to you all in your organizations. And um, there's a lot of different ways about family-friendly employment practices that we can talk about how you might be able to impact uh, the future of Salina. So thanks for being here and your commitment to the United Way. <clears throat>